If you haven't seen my first video about Chris, basically he's a guy who thought he could prove God's existence with his theory of everything called the CTMU. In my first video I outlined problems with the CTMU, like that it isn't experimentally verifiable, can't make predictions, has no real-world applicability, um, it confounds maths and metaphysics, and it unnecessarily invents terms that Chris doesn't properly define. Okay? All rather bad things for a supposed theory of everything. Um, but just to keep this section brief, we can apply Occam's razor to this scenario. The CCMU isn't taken seriously by scientists, philosophers, mathematicians, and physicists. Okay? Not even Chris himself denies that. Is the reason why that they're all you know, lazy and stupid, um, incompetent and conspiratorial, which is what Chris would have you believe, or that the theory is just bad? Occam's razor would definitely point at the latter option. Now, this isn't necessarily proof of anything, but it is something to weigh strongly against the CTMU's worth that the people most qualified to judge it don't happen to like it. And this is why Chris has contempt for academia. Anyway, um, if you haven't seen the dumpster fire of a comment section on my first video, I drew the ire of Chris's supporters, and I didn't expect to be quite so numerous, um, but they came out of the woodwork to uh, defend the CTMU and Chris. And, well, as you could expect, pretty much none of them engaged with the content of the video, instead just attacking my character, or when they did address the content of the video, as you're going to see, their responses fell short of anything like a refutation. So, without further ado, let's get into the comments. Nanya Biznaz writes, Ha! You hardly tackled him. And a word of advice from someone obviously smarter than you. Well, that doesn't reek of insecurity. Chris is way out of your league and you should give up. Your British accent hardly lends you a 200 plus IQ, let alone any sort of common sense. Well, it's actually an Australian accent, but I'm sorry you feel threatened by it all the same. It sure seems like you have a hard-on for Chris, with a question mark. Something about mummy and daddy, blah 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 blah. The very way you speak in this video, the cadence, it has a bit of a snide, arrogant vibe that is almost punchable and, to be quite honest, laughable. You are disgusting. This is how you don't respond to a video like mine. When you start hurling insults without addressing any of what I've said, it just looks like you've lost, so try to do a better job next time. Next we have Daniel Falk. As you can see, he's a refined, sophisticated gentleman, even some caviar. He writes, Meanwhile, all the people who do understand the CTMU are laughing at you for not understanding basic math and philosophy concepts. Ah uh, yes, all the people who understand the CTMU. Well, apparently that category doesn't include Daniel, because on his Quora he claims to only understand 5% of it. And if the likes of Daniel can't understand it, what hope have we normal folk? In any case, Perhaps just a little bit of scepticism on Daniel's part is in order, considering that 1. he doesn't get the theory, and 2. actual experts don't like it. Username asks Daniel why he thinks Chris is the smartest person on earth. Daniel replies, he told me, and I believe him. Daniel would probably jump off a bridge if Chris told him to. Okay, next. XXXYYZXXX. I can only surmise that this username represents his chromosome. He writes, Congratulations Solomon Nelson. You will go down in history alongside, as two words, the folks who rejected heliocentrism. Okay, the heliocentric model was accepted by scientists but rejected by zealots. Contrarily, the CTMU is accepted by zealots but rejected by scientists. That's the difference. Anyway, on this guy's reddit he claims there's no such thing as friends, so I don't know quite what went wrong in this guy's life, but I hope he turns a corner. Eike Freidank. Now, I have some misgivings about showing this guy's comments because he did have the good sense to remove them, but you know, the internet doesn't forget, so here they are anyway. This guy just tries to get attention with this video. I feel pity for him because he has nothing going for him as far as intellect and charisma are concerned. Let's just tolerate this and I can't read the rest because he deleted the comment. The no brains, no charisma comment came from me. I chose to delete it because it's not nice. Anyway, it's the truth. Just going back on his apology. It's no ad hominem argument, because I don't link your lack of ability to your specific statements. Well, I never said it was, I just thought it was funny. Having said that, I can teach you some CTMU basics if you want. 
have a nice day. I deleted that comment too. But sure, Aika, you can feel free to spread the CTMU gospel in the comments. I wouldn't delete it. In response to this guy ENM, um, shout out to ENM by the way, he kept uh, responding to all these guys and sticking up for me, so uh, you rock in particular, man. Um, anyway, Ica says in response to him, Right, that's metaphysics in the troll land of Quora, YouTube, or Wikipedia. If you close the YouTube and porn windows and actually go outside into the real world, and then read the right literature, or start to read books at all, you'll see where you went wrong. You may even wake up from the nonsense content in your mind and awaken spiritually. <laughs> Man, this is so condescending. So, Ica's just doing here to Ian the same thing they did to me, um, which is to just insult him without explaining where exactly he went wrong. He continues. But that's not always comfortable. I am struggling with the presence of demons here in Germany and the presence of a ghost in my home. I'm not even going to comment on that. Anyway, um, he says, Sam McPhail, I think you should ignore them. They are little goblins who only suck tellies out of you with their unjustified, uninformed nonsense and ad hominem BS. <laughs> they are victims of decades of false indoctrination and frustration in life. Just keep studying the CDMU. The wheel is rolling faster now, and we want to be prepared. Please don't take this video down, like you do with all your comments. The awakening is coming, and I'd love to see you humiliated after being so bold to show your pretty face. Well, it's been about a month, and the awakening hasn't happened yet, but in the meantime, I look forward to your comments on this video. Okay, next. Electric Qualia. Um, now, to this guy's credit, he actually responds to the points I make, and is relatively respectful in doing so. Anyway, he writes... About 80% is personalized ad hominem. No, I pointed things out about Chris's character for entertainment purposes, uh, because I find him funny. I didn't connect any of his quirks to his actual arguments. You say we are all sock puppets, that's ad hominem. Well, that's actually not what I said. I just speculated that there were sock accounts in the comments section. On my charge that the CTMU has no real world applicability. Irrelevant. Metaphysics is not necessarily practical. Okay, but the CTMU claims to be more than metaphysics. According to Chris, it's a work of science, and it's a theory of everything, in which case real-world applicability is of utmost relevance. Theories of everything are meant to have real-world applicability. I find this to be one of the most annoying things about the CTMU. It tries to dodge criticisms like mine by shape-shifting and saying it's not science, it's metaphysics, uh, which is just embarrassing. On my charge that the CTMU isn't experimentally verifiable. Yes and no. Yes, because of 1. Accelerated expansion of the universe. 2. Quantum retrocausation. And 3. The stability of perception itself. Well, the third one listed is just nonsense, and I fail to see how simply listing esoteric physics terms proves that the theory is experimentally verifiable, but okay. No, in the sense that the whole point is to bypass experimental verification, and thus short-circuit Hume's problem of induction. That's a really lovely ambition, we would all love that, um, but again, this is just listing something the CTMU can apparently do without showing how it can actually do it. On my charge that the CTMU confounds maths and metaphysics. Math is metaphysics. Now, that is not true. Maths and metaphysics concern completely different things, have different terms and different methods, so it is a problem for Chris to confound them. The CTMU is supposed to be a foundation of mathematics, which has eluded logicians for a long time. Again, a lovely ambition, but there's no proof of this. On my charge that the CTMU unnecessarily invents terms that aren't properly defined. It does define them properly. That you don't like it isn't a criticism. No, the CTMU doesn't define its terms properly. If neither you nor Chris can explain the terms to the satisfaction of physicists, which you can't, then forget about it. If you're someone who really feels the need to invent terms, you should 1. Limit the amount you invent, Chris invents like 50. 2. You should define them with great clarity, Chris often just defines them according to his other neologisms. And 3. You should attempt to define them with respect to the surrounding literature. Chris fails on every account, and honestly I suspect the reason for all the jargon is that it protects the theory from real criticism. 
It's there as a deterrent for outsiders, and I doubt it's necessary for the argument. But thanks for actually engaging with the video. Andrew Hawke writes, Solomon is an non-playable character. Pay attention, people. Oh yes, another one of those everyone I disagree with slash don't like is a NPC types. Well, good news for you, Andrew. You've displayed sufficient uniqueness of character and creative talent in your hit single, What Really Happened, to be a certified playable character. So, congratulations. I personally wouldn't play as you though. The last one I'm going to share is by this guy Sam McPhail. Most of it is honestly just a less succinct version of what Electric Qualia already wrote, only with more personal invective, uh, but since he wrote over 1,800 words in response to my video, I feel that I should respond to him. For the sake of brevity, I'll just respond to his main points, uh, but the whole thing is pretty funny, so it'll be on screen in case you want to read it all. He solved quantum gravity. My astrophysics professor said the CEMU would change our understanding of reality as we know it. Sam, that's not what you say here. Apparently you quote, evangelized the CTMU to him. And he wasn't talking about the CTMU changing our understanding of reality. He was talking about solving quantum gravity, changing our understanding of reality. <sighs> Fuck you, that's being honest, and now let's debate. Let's start with some comments pointers, whatever the hell a comments pointer is. 1A or his theory of everything, aka. The CTMU is not discredited by making fun of Chris. I agree with that, but I never insinuated that the CTMU is wrong because of its author. What should be even more commonsensical to you is that a theory of everything should have lots of new terms because it's an entire new language to analyze anything describably by science or human perception or any physical observable phenomena in the universe. Okay, I don't necessarily have a problem with Chris inventing terms, I just have a problem with the way that he does it. If you want to know why, I explained earlier in response to Electric Qualia. You try to make fun of him talking about cryanial circumference? His point is valid in every way. Don't see how it isn't. It does matter, you obvious fucktard. Yes, if my brain was A1000 times bigger, I would be way more intelligent, and there is a general correlation. If your brain were a thousand times bigger, you would be dead. And correlation doesn't prove causation. This should be really clear in this case, since many large-brained creatures are stupider than smaller-brained creatures. Chris also points out that he doesn't say it definitively means you're possessive more intelligent. He says, quote, We would need more cases of large-head intelligent people, but he said his personal opinion is that. Yeah, and his personal opinion is trash. Then you mock his idea of birth control. Okay, let's hear your solution to overpopulation. I don't need a solution to overpopulation to be able to criticize someone else's. Especially Chris's idea to implant birth control in everyone at age 10. <gasps> then you mock Chris for saying some monkeys show better cognitive abilities than Somalis possessive and given we have credible tested scientific data which Chris has pointed out and much of the world knows about such as their language and behavior and triaining abilities to learn out of their normal habitat, this is true. No, this is not true. I, I don't understand how this guy is even entertaining this notion. I mean, could a gorilla speak English? Could a gorilla cook pasta on a stovetop? Could a gorilla drive a car? It's like this guy's never met a Somali in his life. Otherwise, I don't think he'd be saying this. Then your most retarded and pathetic point is it has no real application. That's real world application to you. Um, if we have based insight to God, we have access to the divine and an unlimited source of knowledge for mankind and the why for everything. Again, it would be lovely if this were true, but there's no proof of this. Chris has solved Cartesian mind-matter dualism, just more baseless assertions. That would revolutionize psychology. He said that to me in person. Is that practical enough for you? Try thinking a little. What otherwise constitutes a practical application for you how to get a bigger screen TV or fix your car engine or the remote in your house, you unimaginative brainless fuck? Oh Sam, don't act so high and mighty. When you were my age, didn't you get arrested for causing a million dollars worth of property damage by illegally lighting a firework? It is not experimentally verifiable? Well, I believe that it is, given one of Chris's predictions was correct, made more than a decade ahead of time. <laughs> Did you know that the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate? Was Chris's prediction made back in the 80s? 
they discovered it through raw data in like 1998. Unless you have proof, there's no reason to believe that Chris predicted it on valid grounds, or even that he predicted it at all. Okay, that's one of probably thousands upon thousands of real-world predictions he could make. Probably. Mathematical metaphysics is an entire new field of mathematics that is basic to even physics and can describe a lot of detail about the universe like a person's charmer. Yeah, so is that practical revolutionizing science? Obviously not to you is proving there is an afterlife practical. Is God practical? Chris does define his terms. For instance, telesis is pre-space-time potential that get is actualized from UBT into the universe. But for those of you who don't know, UBT isn't a physics term, it's just another term Chris invented. Everything in the universe is a manifestation of telesis. Everything is made of telesis, even the Higgs boson particle. Well then go and experimentally verify it. The burden of proof is not on me to show that telesis exists. It has no predictive power? Yes, it does. It's a theory of everything that can explain everything that happens in all of reality in every single possible parallel misspelled universe. More baseless assertions. You're a ignoramius. <laughs> oh man, this is knee deep in irony. Every word in this sentence is either grammatically wrong or misspelt, yet he has the audacity to call people ignoramiuses. <gasps> you want to know why Chris has contempt for academia because they can't understand his theory or give it a chance or embrace it, yet they've stolen several discoveries of his and take the credit citation needed, and he's smarter than all of them and developed a framework capable of occupying all of academia for all future eternity. As opposed to past eternity, I guess. Do you care about anything? Do you know that Chris has over 10,000 unpublished papers? And now he is starting to publish again, because people like us actually care. Does that matter to you? No, that doesn't matter to me. When it comes to science, quality over quantity. And if the quality of those papers is at all like that of the CTMUs, then that's not a good start. You can't show where one single term is flawed. Yes, I can refer to my response to electric qualia. Your video says I tried braifing through it and can't understand any of this. Therefore, he doesn't define it to my liking, nor to any expert's liking. Anyway, I responded K to him, which triggered this response. You have been defeated. Why you are speechless? Let's debate right now. Let's go, motherfucker. We'll straight up trade intellect. What are you afraid of, absolute truth? The CTMU is as close as we'll ever get to absolute truth. Everyone else will perish. Your karma is implied and explained in the CTMU. If you're possessive curious about your fucking dead end future for mocking God, I never mocked God, but okay. Do you want to give your soul to the devil or show God your possessive serious? Then he closes the rant with a very God fearing fuck you. If you made it this far, Thank you kindly for watching, I really appreciate your viewership and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly had a lot of fun making this. Um, if you made it this far, you can leave a comment, shoo shoo telesis goblins, we want to ward off those pesky buggers. Um, as with my first video, it was part entertainment, part uh, actual argument. Uh, nevertheless, um, you can expect a lot of comments saying, Solomon just made fun of us, that's not an argument. Uh, which is dishonest because I did address the argument, but you know, you can expect those comments anyway. So you can feel free to respond to them with this timestamp. And with that said, the fire rises.